Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. In today's video, I'll be using Paper Rose Studios Maya's Garden Collection. Paper Roses Maya's Garden Collection is available in the 12 by 12 and also 6 by 6 size, plus there's a coordinating die cut pack. I have the Maya's Garden Basics Collection in the 12 by 12 size. The Basics Collection coordinates beautifully with the original Maya's Garden Collection, but I only have the Basics. One thing I love about Paper Roses 12 by 12 collections on the back side of the front sheet, they have tons of sentiment cut-aparts in beautiful colors that coordinate with the collection. And it's a nice variety of sentiments that you can use year-round. The other fun thing about their 12 by 12 collections, at the very bottom of the paper where it has the label and brand, the back side has a pattern. So you can cut that off and use that on your cards or projects. Sometimes 12 by 12 patterns are too large to work with cards, but this collection is perfect since the designs are small and most of them are muted or tone on tone. There are lots of fun geometric patterns, a couple of plaids, beautiful watercolor designs. And as I mentioned earlier, this collection works nicely with their original Maya's Garden collection. And I will link to both collections in the description box below. Now here's a look at the coordinating die cut pack. These are all pop out die cuts, so you don't need to do any fussy cutting. The images and sentiments are attached by just a few small tabs. I like to pop them out, then I use my scissors to trim off that tiny white tab. Most of the die cut pieces are beautiful floral images, but there are a few sentiments. I love the colors in this collection. It's a fun break from making fall and Christmas cards since I've been doing a lot of that lately and I do have plans for more Christmas cards here very soon. I have several cards to share with you using the new Maya's Garden Basics Collection. Let's go ahead and get started with card design number one. I will be using some card sketches for inspiration. The first sketch is from MFT. This is number 667. I selected a colorful polka dot paper for the background. For the wide strip that goes diagonal across the card, I have a tone on tone soft peach with sort of a basket weave design. I layered it on some peach cardstock, and I did cut that piece longer than the card. After adhering the diagonal piece, I flipped over the panel, used my scissors to trim off the extra. Now it's flush to the edge of the card panel. Then I layered that piece on some dark teal cardstock. I'll be using Paper Rose's envelope die on several of my cards. I love how it has the cut out opening so you can tuck things inside the envelope. And it works perfectly for some of these beautiful floral die cut pieces. I cut out the envelope from the same dark teal cardstock, put one of the floral die cut images inside the envelope, flipped it over, to secure it in place, I put some double-sided adhesive tape on the back side. I also added a few small foam squares behind the floral piece to pop it up slightly against the envelope. Now I'll put some foam dimension on the back of the envelope. I'm using scrapbook.com's one millimeter thickness foam. Make sure to get good coverage so there isn't one area that sags. I'll remove the release paper and add the envelope on the center of the card. For a sentiment, I'm adding have an awesome day. This is one of the many sentiment cut aparts that was included on the back of the front cover sheet. I spent a little bit of time and cut out all of the sentiments. And that front sheet has a ton of sentiments. I'm only using a small amount of them. It's nice to have them all cut out and I'll set them aside and use them on future projects. I'll cut a fishtail on the right and left side pop up the sentiment with some more foam dimension. And here's the foam dimension I'm using. That last roll I ran out of completely, so I did need to start another roll. 
I'll add one more row of foam dimension, remove the release paper, and add the sentiment on the lower portion of the envelope. Using a scrap piece of the dark teal cardstock, I'm cutting a small banner to put in the upper left-hand corner. I first cut a fishtail on the bottom, cut the right side in slightly at an angle, did the same thing on the other side, and I'll adhere it in place with some glue. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. The other card's basically the same, I just use a different sentiment cut apart. Now moving on to card design number two. The card sketch is from Cards TV. This is sketch number 24. And if you are interested in any of the sketches I use in this video, I share all of that information on my coordinating blog post. That link is provided in the description box below, or you can simply head over to christymarcott.com. For this card, I used a fun yellow pattern paper for the background, added a diagonal panel of the teal watercolor design, layered both of them on some dark teal cardstock. For the narrow strip that goes across the card, the longer strip, I'm using the very end of the pattern paper. It's the back side of the pattern paper that has the paper rose label on it. It has this fun teal design with little arrows all over it. Before adhering that piece, I did put a scrap cardstock piece on the very left. That way it stays nice and level. Next, I'll add the sentiment, thankful for you. Before adhering the sentiment, I'm also adding the scrap cardstock piece and also a scrap piece of pattern paper. I'll be adding a couple of the die cut images, beautiful yellow flower with some teal leaves, and I'll adhere those in place with some glue. I'll first adhere the leaves and put glue on the back of the flower and adhere it right above the sentiment. And for a final finishing touch, using more of the teal cardstock, I'll cut a small banner and adhere it in the upper right hand corner. And I'm cutting all of the banners the same way. I call this my whimsical banner. And I know I did not invent this style of banner. I just really enjoy using it. For some of the cards, I'm leaving them nice and flat without any foam dimension or bling. That way I have some cards on hand that I can mail without paying any additional postage. I also donate a lot of my cards to a local charity and they mail the cards out. So I like to have some cards for them where they don't have to pay the additional postage. For card design number three, the card sketch is from Cards TV. This is sketch number 28. Selected this lovely light teal plaid paper for the background, adding a panel of the teal watercolor paper, layering both pieces on some dark teal cardstock. For most of my cardstock layers, I add an additional eighth of an inch. Sometimes the sketches list those cardstock layer measurements, but most of them don't. I'll put ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. For the narrow strip that goes across the card, using more of the dark teal cardstock. This card will be featuring another envelope with one of the beautiful floral die cut images tucked right inside. I used some white shimmer cardstock for the envelope and I'm securing the die cut piece on the back side with some double sided adhesive tape. I also popped up the front of the floral piece using some thin foam squares. Now I'll put foam dimension on the back of the envelope, remove the release paper and add the envelope on the front of the card. I love the large size of the envelope. It's perfect for the featured element on a card. And with all of Paper Rose's fun die cut packs, I always end up with some extra floral or other die cut images. So now I can easily just pop those extra die cut pieces inside the envelope, put it on some pattern paper or cardstock, add a sentiment, and my card is finished. I used another sentiment cut apart for this card, sending lots of hugs. And for a final finishing touch, using more of the teal cardstock and cutting a whimsical banner to adhere in the upper left hand corner. So there is my finished card. I made four this time, two in teal and the other two in yellow. For card design number four, using another Cards TV sketch, this time at number 10. This sketch is perfect for featuring four different pattern papers. 
I chose two that have more of a tone-on-tone -tone design and the other two with more of a variety of colors. For the background piece, I'm using some white shimmer cardstock and I'll be layering it on some dark teal cardstock. And the dark teal cardstock I'm using in this video is by Coordinations. It's the Mediterranean color. It matches beautifully with the pattern paper. I have one final pattern paper rectangle to adhere. Then I'll put ATG tape on the back and layer this piece on the dark teal cardstock. Put my card front onto a card base. For the four different pattern papers on the background, I put the two with all the colors diagonal and the two teal tone on tone patterns diagonal from each other. I think it adds a better balance to the card. Instead of the circle that's indicated on the card sketch, I'll be adding a large stitched oval die cut, and I did cut this out from vellum. I'm adding the sentiment hello. I use Paper Rose's Vintage Hello layered stamp set and also the coordinating die set. I love the design. So you can either stamp it or you can die cut out the sentiment and add all those fun little pieces. If you don't wanna fuss with all those little die cut pieces, you can simply use the outline on the die set to cut out the stamped sentiment. And that's what I did. I also cut out a second outline piece using some silver holographic cardstock. I layered the two pieces together to create this beautiful shimmery holographic drop shadow underneath the sentiment. Then I popped up the sentiment with some foam dimension. When adhering the vellum oval, I only put glue behind the sentiment. That way the glue doesn't show through on the vellum. I'll add a couple of the flower die cut pieces in the lower right hand corner. Then for a final finishing touch, I'll add one of my whimsical banners in the upper left hand corner. So there is my finished card, and this time I made a total of four. Two of the cards feature floral die cut images and the other two do not. I think the colors in this collection overall work just fine for masculine or feminine cards, but I figured I'd leave at least a few cards without the floral images. For card design number five, the card sketch is from Freshly Made Sketches. This is number 610. I selected the light peach tone on tone pattern paper for the background that has the basket weave design. I cut out three narrow strips of pattern paper, two with more of the colors, and the one in the center is the teal, and that's the back side of the label on the bottom of the 12 by 12 paper. And I did put double-sided adhesive tape on the back of those narrow strips to adhere them to the card. I'll layer this piece on some light orange cardstock, put ATG tape on the back, and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. For the small circle elements on the left side of the sketch, I'm adding a few flowers. I used two different die sets from Paper Rose. The main flower is their LED Flower Builder set, and for the very center of the flower, I decided to use their Eve flower die set. And I believe that set has been discontinued here in the US, but I believe it's still available on Paper Rose's website. I will have links for all of the products in the description box below. I used the same light orange cardstock color for the flowers. For the background piece, I used some white shimmer cardstock and yellow for the very center. For a sentiment, I'm adding hello there, and I did put some double-sided adhesive tape on the back side. And for a final finishing touch, adding another whimsical banner, this time in the upper right-hand corner. So there is my finished card, and I did make four using this design. The cards all feature a different sentiment cut apart. For card design number six, I'm not using a card sketch. I selected two pattern papers, the fun, colorful polka dot paper, and also the tone-on-tone -tone yellow plaid paper. I cut them at an angle, and I'll layer both of them on some dark teal cardstock. There's a little bit of a gap between the two pattern paper pieces, but that's okay, I'll be covering it up. Using the same dark teal cardstock, I cut out a narrow stitch strip die cut from Paper Rose. This is a slimline set, so it's definitely way longer than I need. I have double-sided adhesive tape on the back side. After adhering it in place, I'll flip over this panel, use my scissors, and trim off the extra. 
Then I'll put ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. This card will be featuring another envelope, this time filled with lots of the floral die cut images. I'll hold the envelope, start tucking in all the die cut pieces, trying to get the placement correct. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'll flip it over, put some double-sided adhesive tape on the back side to secure most of those pieces in place. A few of the die cut pieces are still loose, but I'll make sure I have adhesive on the back of all the different pieces so I don't lose one off of the card. I'll remove the release paper, and I will be popping it up with some thin foam dimension. This is the same one millimeter foam roll that I've been using throughout the video. I'll make sure to get good coverage on the back of the envelope. I'll remove the release paper. With some foam dimension, it's hard to remove the release paper. I really like scrapbook.com's foam rolls. The release paper comes off very easily. Sometimes I struggle if I just recently painted my nails or cut them too short. I also added some foam squares behind the die cut pieces that were coming out of the envelope. Want to make sure all of those areas are popped up. Now I'll add the envelope on the front of the card. Once that's adhered, I'll check all the die cut pieces and see if I need to add any other adhesive. And I decided to pop up just a couple more of the floral pieces using some thin foam squares. The small yellow flower in the background, I'll put some foam dimension behind the top portion, put glue on the bottom of the stem, then tuck it back in place. Next I'll add the sentiment, just a little note, and I do have some double-sided adhesive tape on the back of the sentiment. I'll adhere it at the lower portion of the envelope. For a final finishing touch, I'll add a whimsical banner in the dark teal color, put it in the upper right hand corner. I always have scrap pieces of cardstock lying around. They're the perfect size to cut small banners and add just that little extra touch to your card. Also adding one final foam square underneath the orange flower on the left side of the card. So there is my finished card and I did make four using this design. All of the cards feature different die cut images and sentiments. After making this set of cards, I ended up with just a few of the floral die cut pieces left. I didn't use any of the sentiments or other die cut pieces that were included. Now here's another look at the 20 cards I made using Paper Rose Studios Maya's Garden Basics Collection. I used the 12 by 12 pattern paper size and also the coordinating die cut pack. If you are interested in any of the products I used in this video, I do have links provided in the description box below. Paper Rose is located in Australia and they do ship their products internationally, but you can also purchase their products here in the US and I have links for both locations in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.